to the tropical climate. Many of these Spanish people, they are also not accustomed to hard work, hard labor on the fields. They are not accustomed to labor in the tropical climate. Many of these Spanish persons who arrive in the Caribbean also are too proud to go and work in the mines and on the estates. Right, so very important for you to understand what contributed to this decline of the indigenous people. Major reason, the attitude of these Spanish people. They came here and they didn't want to work on the estates, the mines. They came here, they, didn't, they couldn't tolerate the, the tropical climate, they're not accustomed to hard labor. And because of this, they enslaved the indigenous Indians. Because of this, Attitude, not wanting to work, not wanting to go and work on the estates, or to die for pearls, or to go and for gold, they enslave the indigenous people. General slavery was banned by the Spanish crown and the church. General slavery was banned by the crown and the church. But slavery was allowed when native Indians were considered rebellious or accused of cannibalism. Right? So the church, the Roman Catholic Church, and the Spanish king and queen had banned slavery, but many persons, Spanish people in the Caribbean, said it would be allowed if the native Indians are rebellious or of cannibalism. Many of these Spanish colonists ignored the laws. Many of these Spanish colonists ignored the law that slavery was prohibited and they continued to enslave the Indians. I remember I told you all, some of the persons who came down were conquistadors. Remember, we talked about that? Some of these early Spanish explorers, some of these early Spanish colonists were conquistadors. So they came with a fighting attitude. They came with a fighting spirit. This is why they did not treat these Indians nicely. And this is why they were so hostile towards these native Indians. And why so many were killed. <coughs> now there are two systems, two systems that were implemented and enforced in the Caribbean. And you will see them there on the screen projector, encomienda, and repartimiento. The first two words up here. Some of you might have met those words at CXC or K. What is the meaning of encomienda and repartimiento? Do they ring a bell? Very good, young man. I think encomienda um, is um, like a division. 
nation like Spain, um, Dutch, France, as I've had different regions that they could occupy or use or colonize. Okay. Anybody else want to add to that or help in? In the encomium, that's a strong one, that's a strong where they said that the slaves would work for them and in return they would give the slaves religion, religion the Indian religion, and, and also that they were protecting them, well, the Arawaks mostly from the Tajiks. Very excellent, right? So yeah, that, that second point is exactly what the encomienda system was. The encomienda system, the Spanish colonists are given parcels of land, right? They are given parcels of land. What you're talking about is our next system. We will come to that in the next lecture, right? But what the young lady was talking about is correct. The encomienda, the Spanish colonists were given parcels of land and they were allotted native Indians to work on that land. So if I am a Spanish colonist and I land in Trinidad, I'm given two acres of land and maybe five Indians to work on that land, right? Very important. This is how settlers got land, and this is how they were able to divide the land amongst the colonists. Right? Now there was also something called repartimiento, the second word up there, repartimiento, in which the Indians were subjugated, they had to be converted to Christianity, as, as the students said just now, and the colonists had to take care of them. So these Indians would be working on the land, diving for pearls, growing cotton, and they also had to be converted to Christianity. So they had to go to church, they had to learn the Spanish prayers and they, and they also had to help build these churches. I want you to remember that too. Eh? These Indians, native Indians, had to go and build churches and schools and hospitals, right? for the Spanish people. Things like government buildings, Indians had to build that. So they gave labor, not just on the estates, not just looking for gold or silver, not just growing tobacco or cotton, but also, more importantly, putting up these buildings. Now, what, what would be some of the reasons that native Indians were killed. I want you to tell me some of the reasons, right, that native Indians were killed. Now we talked about this overwork, the hard work under the encomienda and repartimiento systems, right? That they sometimes died from overwork, from sheer exhaustion, right? But tell me more about this demographic decline, the topic today. Young lady in blue, the back there. How, how did these Indians decline? What, what contributed to their decline besides the overwork? Well, many Spanish came with all the diseases, so they died from infectious diseases like influenza. Good, very good, right? So they died from diseases that were brought from Spain, right? How else did they decline? How else did they die? The Indians, uh, they, they died from besides diseases, they were overworked. They were killed for sport. Killed for sport and recreation, right? They were just as people would go hunting in the forest, they were killed as sport, right? For so recreation. They also practice infanticide and suicide. They practice infanticide and suicide. So I want you to understand the decline wasn't just from the Spanish, but the, the pressure, the frustration of these Indians caused many to kill their young children, caused many to also practice abortion, also, right, suicide, killing themselves, jumping over cliffs and things. I want you to understand that these people appreciated the importance of life. Eh? And this, this whole issue of suicide and infanticide showed how much they are hated Spanish. Many of these persons, many of these persons died by drowning while they went searching for pearls. 
Many of these Indians died from drowning when they went searching for pearls. Pearls are really Even the horses and the dogs that the Spanish brought, right, killed many of these Indians. And in addition to some of the diseases that he already mentioned, smallpox, there was a smallpox outbreak in Cuba in 1520. A smallpox outbreak in Cuba, 1520. You said so many dogs and horses killed these Remember, you know how huge are horses, right? These horses <coughs> would trample these Indians, like a young boy, five or six years, could be trampled and he would be killed. Many of these dogs, you know, like how we have the pit bull, these would be vicious hunting dogs they bring from Spain. So they would just let these dogs loose, and these dogs would sometimes rip these Indians apart. Right? But let me also tell you too that these horses trampled on the fields of the Indians. So you see these Indians who had their corn, cassava, and pumpkin, or the Mayans, their crops were destroyed. So sometimes they starved to death because they had no food, because their crops were destroyed. Some of these Spanish people they brought from like England, the wild pigs and things to just run loose on the islands. And all these things destroy crops. Now I also want you to remember that when you introduce foreign flora and fauna, when you introduce foreign plants and animals into an environment, you also introduce pests and parasites that could have a negative effect. So when these Spanish people brought their animals into the Caribbean and amongst the Mayans, it created a disaster. You know, remember how sometimes you would see advertisement on television about, it's a snail, this called a snail or something? Yeah. The, the African snail. A few years ago, we had the mealybug attack in the hibiscus, right? Sometimes when you're traveling on a plane, you know the air hostesses come and spray the plane, yeah. right? All these things they didn't have during that time. I had nobody to spray the ship or to find out and go and check to see if the dogs have ticks or anything. So they are bringing these animals and plants from a different country into the Caribbean and there is something that created an environmental destruction that the Indians didn't understand. So they might have corn and cassava growing and it suddenly started to die. And they didn't understand why. They thought maybe their gods had failed them. And the reason being, the Spanish brought pests, and these pests and these diseases, fungal diseases and things, started to attack the flora and the fauna in the Caribbean. So I want you to understand how the environment had changed. It was an ecological change, right? 